welcome to you my name's Dale and this is Dale's Addiction today's video it was kind of inspired by Cassie Thorpe's recent video how she changed her mind on her luxury wish list but it's not that <laughs> but that was the catalyst for this video which was the bags that I kind of obsessed over during 2022 and I didn't buy or haven't bought yet and there were some that were really close calls whether it was availability or price or just prioritizing because we can't have it all and even though I had a stellar 2022 in adding to my luxury handbag collection and if you haven't seen what I bought this year check this video out it's crazy but um, there's still a lot of things according to this list that I made an old-fashioned list in my Louis Vuitton agenda because I haven't been using it <laughs> um, that I kind of I've gone through my phone and literally any luxury handbag lovers phone is full of screenshots and selfies of bags that they are loving you take the screenshot you go to the store you try it on you take a selfie you go home you think about it put your hand up if you're one of those people my phone's full of them and so I have put them all into an album and I'm going to talk you through which ones I loved and why I ultimately didn't go ahead with them and which ones I might regret had I all the money in the world I would have bought and which ones I might still be chasing because, you know, sometimes you just can't forget about them. So the first one, um, the first one was, a, I think I was talking about it back in December. I wanted a green handbag. In fact, a lot of the back end of 2021, I was talking about a green handbag. And the one that I was ready to try the day it dropped at Louis Vuitton on the 1st of January, to be precise, was the Alma BB. There were a rainbow of colors available in this piece, but the green was the one that I wanted. I went into store, I ended up buying another bag that I ultimately sold, but that's another story. And the strap, the strap drop, just, it just, it was a funny looking strap for that bag, number one. And number two, um, the Alma BB, the monogram and the Damia Abine, you can wear them cross body and I really like the bag like that. This one, because of the strap, you couldn't wear it cross body. It was a handheld or shoulder bag. I mean, I couldn't wear it cross body because I'm not petite enough. I have seen pictures of teeny tiny little people wearing it cross body, but that ain't me. So as much as I love the color of that bag, and the style of that bag, the size of it, I just couldn't go ahead with it. And I ended up being thankful that I held out because I got my Gucci mini bamboo handle in the beautiful green. And it has a crossbody adjustable green leather strap as well as a fun thick strap that doesn't look tacky like that one did. So this is the bag in question and to be honest, I am very relieved that I didn't get the LV Alma BB and I got this one instead. The next one was also from Louis Vuitton around the same time and it was the Kusan bag in this beautiful fuchsia magenta. It came in that colour and an emerald colour. I thought this will be the magenta bag for me. It also had this really beautiful detail kind of perspex inside the gold chain strap which I thought was really unique. But the price on that bag was like 5,900. Then there was an increase and it went up to like 6,500. And I'm like, yeah, nah, I don't like it that much. And if you don't know Australian, yeah, nah, still means nah. <laughs> and nah, yeah, is like, hmm, maybe. So um, yeah, nah, for the Kusan. And look, no regrets. This is one that if I did have all the money in the world, I'd probably have it. But the more I look at it, the more it's just not my vibe. Shortly after seeing that bag, Chanel dropped this beautiful little mini rectangular handle bag with the Leo Lion charm on it. And I went and looked at it and it was like $8,000 just for a mini rectangular bag with the handle and the charm. And I was like, I just can't justify that for a mini rectangular because I have one already and I wanted the black. I only have a photograph of the white. It just doesn't have the charm on it. 
I wonder if they'll sell the charm. Anyway, funny story. Um, they sold the charm as a key ring and as a brooch, and I bought it as a brooch, but I no longer have the mini rectangular. <laughs> Sold it. I sold it recently in a vlog sale. Um, I think I just I'm drawn to novel and fun things, and I guess it's a lesson for me to go. You know what? I'm glad I have the brooch because I love my novel Chanel brooches. I also have this little one too. Um, but I probably need to think more about those sorts of whimsy things, and really make sure that there's a place for them in my collection and it's not a duplicate and this certainly would have been a duplicate bag and now that I don't have the bag I guess it turns out it was a good decision right <laughs> the next one was also from Chanel and it was their denim release with the kind of graffiti writing all over it this in the black denim because I have the Chanel 20B denim in the medium size and I thought the black faded denim would have been really good in my Chanel collection because it's undone but I actually went and I was lucky enough to try it on just on a chance visit to Chanel I didn't sign up for it or, or try and get it I actually thought it looked a little bit cheap compared to this one um, and I think it's because of how they did the font on the bag I don't know I just yeah it just I'm um, no so I passed on that one, but I obsessed about it for quite a while before I passed on it. So I'm actually very glad that I didn't get all caught up in the hype for that bag. I started to have a thing for fluffy bags in around March. I started looking and there were some old season Balenciaga hourglass bags that were fluffy, some faux kind of shearling fluff in like neon pink a white and a neon yellow and I was wondering if my Balenciaga sales associate could have been able to source me one of the the white non shearling shearling hourglass bags because I like that bag but it's very angular for me anyway a few days later she said I did not ask for anything Dale and this is what came and it was this neon yellow hourglass bag it was insane it made me laugh it was so fun um, I, I left it there I just couldn't see me wearing it it looked like a fraggle in a bag um, <laughs> I just yeah it, it, it's so fun you can see the look on my face in this selfie but um, yeah I passed on that one and I haven't been back to Balenciaga and given the current circumstances I probably won't either so then the Fendi bug bit me and there's probably a list as long as the ones that I actually bought that I didn't buy but I've tried to curate that down to the couple that I really 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 thought about hard and the first one is the blue mink Fendi first. I saw this one on social media. I saw it in person in the Collins Street Boutique when I went to do my made to order and I could not put it down, but I did put it down because I'm like, Dale, how are you going to style this kind of blue? It's a really vibrant blue. And I thought, well, you don't really need to style it. The style is the bag, that's the thing. But for some reason, I was just like, oh, I can't. And there was a moment in my made to order appointment where I thought I'm not going to buy a bag. Like I'm not gonna be able to land on a design. If I can't, I'll buy that blue Fendi first. Well, I did land on a design and I paid my deposit and that cooled my jets and I walked away from the blue. I honestly thought though that it wouldn't be too popular and I'd be able to pick it up later if I changed my mind. When I told my Sydney client advisor, who Meredith um, very generously shared her details with me when I was trying to get organized for the maid to order, I told her what I'd gone ahead with and said, mm, but I'm, you know, I'm so, I'm so finding it difficult to walk away from the mink. If anything comes up in a blush pink color, let me know. And it did, and she did. And now I have the perfect mink Fendi first for me, not the one that I first saw. And the difference in price between that Fendi first and what a made to order in mink would be are like worlds apart. Like I'm talking probably the best part of $20,000 apart. So 
it was a win and obviously no regrets there. The next one was also a Fendi first and Meredith has this bag. She said it was the one that really started her collecting her Fendi firsts and she's recently done um, a collection of all of her Fendi firsts. She's got like a bazillion um, in all different sizes. So I'll link that video down below. But it's the kind of rainbow pinks and golds magenta. It's It had suede and um, shiny leathers and I'd seen it a few times and I just walked away from it because... I just went, there's too many other things that I'm interested in, but geez, I love this and I really think that I'd enjoy wearing it. I actually tried it on in the Chadston store and I was wearing an outfit that was perfect for it and that's kind of a warning sign to me that if I've dressed for a bag, does that mean that that bag is going to fit in my wardrobe? And there's a few reasons why I don't think this one would. A, it's stripes. I don't wear stripes. Stripes are not for me and I've learned why when I did my styling course recently because I have very round features. I don't have very angular features. Um, stripes are not something I'm drawn to and I think as much as I think that bag's beautiful, I just, I wouldn't choose it. Um, so yeah, I, I still see it. There's one in the Brisbane boutique. I still see it and I still think, oh, is that one on sale? But it will never go on sale in a Fendi boutique. So yeah, I wonder if there's one that I could find somewhere and pick it up for a cheap price. I might buy it then. But as I said, then would I wear it? So, all right, still on the pink train. And again, oh God, this beautiful neon pink Petite Mal. I took my neighbor shopping for her first Louis Vuitton bag. And when I walked in, I saw this and I'm like, please, let's grab that and take that upstairs with us while you're trying on your bags because that is stunning. And I tried it so many times. It was only about $500 more expensive than the classic Petite Mal, but again, something was saying, Dale, no, there's all these pieces coming up from spring summer with Fendi, which there were, and I'd already allocated funds towards. Just cool your jets. Yeah. I don't know if you need this bag in your collection and I look back at it now I think it's beautiful the Grinch tried to steal it for me when I went to Meredith's bag room recently if you haven't seen that video I'll link it above it's quite funny um, but I'm okay with not owning it I think again if it popped up on the pre-loved market for a good price I'd really look at it um, but I'm okay I'm okay about it. The next one was a peekaboo and I didn't talk about it very much on my channel but I did talk about it a lot with my client advisor um, and that is the Fendachi medium sized peekaboo and it was like a beautiful white on the outside with this gorgeous pink Fendachi print on the inside. It's like my ideal peekaboo where it's business on the outside, but then as it starts to smile and sag, you get to see these glimpses of pretty pattern on the inside. And I thought that was a beautiful bag. It was very expensive. I can't remember the price now, but there was there really wasn't anything else from Fendachi that I wanted. And I was worried that I was just so glued to that bag because it was the only thing I really liked from the bags. So I passed on it. I'm okay with it. I still look at it and admire it But you don't need to own everything that you like that is going to trigger someone starting with M <laughs> So just before Fendi Cruise came I had my Fendi event and prior to that This range of full winter Fox Fendi firsts came out and I think they're the first Fox Fendi firsts to be released and the thing with the Fendi firsts made from the fox fur, God, is that it's, um, it's all scraps that have come from other products that have been made and they put them together on the bag and it has this kind of, um, not a matted look, but it's, it gives a really unique texture to the bag. They're really beautiful bags. And the one that just caught me and I literally teared up, like I didn't cry, but I was just overcome was the beautiful kind of sherbet, Aperol, orange, red color. It is, it just doesn't show well on photos, but it's absolutely divine. 
and that bag was promised to another client at the time and I asked for it um, at my event. Unfortunately, it didn't get ordered. There was a mix up in communication or something and it wasn't there. If it was at my event, I would have bought it because I would have been caught up in the hype. I would have bought it and it would have been a great memory of that event, but it wasn't there. So when it came in a few weeks later, I was over it because so many pieces had been released from, or were going to be released from the um, Fendi Cruise runway show and the re-editions of the baguette. I was like, I can't be buying no fox when all these bags are coming. So thanks, but no thanks. And probably a blessing in disguise for that one. Okay, so when we get to Fendi Cruise, there's obviously quite a few things. Some of them haven't even come yet. There's been drops all over the place. Not even the sales associates are up to date on what's happening with all the different drops. There are a number of Pico charms that I want. Um, we're starting to get some information through now about what's been produced but allocations to different countries are always the kind of waiting game fingers crossed let's see what we get so not talking about it just yet because i don't want to jinx it but i'll stuff it i'll tell you anyway it's this gorgeous little fluffy neon yellow green pico that's the one i want that's my number one um yeah i i've I've told all my sales associates, but whether they get it is another thing. The other things that I've obsessed over from those collections are the mini green sequin baguette, which I'm told was, you know, only a few were made. Maybe it's coming in January. Maybe it's not. I haven't seen anybody with that bag. Um, there was rumored to be one in Tokyo, but I've never seen any photographs of it. Um, the mini purple lilac um, sequin baguette that was a US Japan release only. Two people I know were lucky enough to pick that up. Lisa from Luxury and Life in the Middle and Una on Instagram at VintageLover83. She has a great baguette collection. Um, yeah, that, those two I've obsessed about. I'm still obsessing about. I'm not paying US prices for these bags if I can only get them in the US. It's just ridiculous to pay a premium. If it's meant to be, it's meant to be. I can't complain about my Fendi collection. I just can't. One that I famously said that I wanted, it was at the top of my list, was the turquoise sequin baguette in the regular size. I was offered that bag. I paid a deposit on that bag and then I changed my mind. <laughs> I just think that I... I spotted it, uh, there was a thrill associated with seeing it and potentially it being offered and then being able to get something so rare, um, but not really considering how it works in my wardrobe and I really don't wear that colour um, and it, it would be too much for how I dress and wear my statement bags, I don't wear them as statements. So yeah, it just didn't fit and I'm okay with the fact that I made that decision and I'm very happy for whoever was able to pick it up because I actually made a good choice for once. There's two more. One that we've talked about quite a bit on my channel and that is the mohair baguette. This bag will either make you go, oh yuck, it looks like one of those white yappy dogs with the little brown eyes introducing Alfie and Edwina um, or you'll be like that bag is so fun I just want to touch it it's so whimsical and cool that's my camp that's the camp I'm in I love it and I still love it I just don't have the spare funds to spend on it um, I wonder that if I still love it into next year and as we approach winter next year, will I be kicking myself that I didn't pick it up? I probably will, to be honest. It's one that, um, it's haunting me. I just need a spare five and a half thousand dollars. <laughs> Please help. <laughs> and the last one that surprises me quite a lot is the peekaboo baguette. The peekaboo baguette? You know, the hybrid peekaboo with the baguette pocket on the front from Cruise. I just adore it. I think the small size and the purple and the reason that I just can't bring myself to purchase that bag 
oh, it's because $7,800 or whatever it's costing now, that's a lot just for a collector's piece because that's simply what it would be because I've already got a purple peekaboo in my collection. This was one of the pieces that was probably going to be on this list if it wasn't for you guys and it's just if I put this one on this side and I put the cutaway of that one in like they're the same bag pretty much and this one's not going anywhere so I can't have two exactly the same but one's got a baguette pocket on it can I? It's a lot of money to spend on something just to have it and yeah I can't I can't do that I can't do it. Maybe they'll bring out more. Maybe it will just be limited to Cruise 23. I don't know. It hurts. It hurts my brain. So in addition to that purple peekaboo, another one that nearly slipped my grasp that I was obsessing about is this Sunshine Chopper. Um, I picked this one up probably three or four months after it launched. It probably wasn't that long. It felt like that long. Um, because that's when my boutique got it and I went in and looked at it and I was on Ban Island and I told my friends in the Fendi Enablers, oh, I just saw this bag, I'm obsessed. Like I was obsessed on Instagram, but now I'm totally obsessed. And they said, oh, it's on Netta Porter for like a thousand dollars cheaper. I'm like, be right back. <laughs> and so I went and bought it. Um, so that was one that, yeah, I almost missed out on too. So look, it, I, I'm under no illusion that I've had a very blessed 2022 on the bag front. You would have seen my entire bag collection video by now. If you haven't, it's coming. I'm pre-filming some content so you have some goodies to look at in the post-Christmas downtime of content. I, um, it, you know, to me, I don't, I don't, don't need to hunt for these things as a reason I don't have them I I absolutely believe that if I'm meant to have them they will show up talking to you guys increases my chances of those things falling into my lap and I really appreciate my global sourcing team thank you so so much you're always giving me the heads up on pieces and DHL just arrived so that's my chance to sign off if you like this video give me a thumbs up if you haven't subscribed already please do I put out videos on Wednesdays and Sundays sometimes some extra ones tell me in the comments below what bag did you leave behind this year gotta go bye